when people hear you talk about this stuff, what's, what's the general consensus or reaction to it? I think I tend to speak in terms of public speaking to fairly special audiences, right? So, I mean, to people in the technology business world or in the AI research world or robotics world, I mean, they're very excited by these developments o o overall, right? And then, you know, we're spinning off all these initiatives from SingularityNet, we're spinning off Singularity Studio for enterprise software, we're spinning off a project called Rejuve to use AI for life extension biology, a project called NuNet that lets you use your mobile phone and other like Internet of Things devices for AI processing. People are very excited by all these options. They're excited by Johansson you know, Robotics in the next couple of years, mass manufacture Sophia type robots to be in businesses everywhere. But yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm conscious this is a very selected pop population. Like if, if I talk about these ideas to say rural Ethiopian farmers or something, there's a lot more confusion about all these possibilities and, and what they're likely to mean. But what, what's interesting is if you talk to farmers in like rural Sichuan province in China or rural Ethiopia, you find people are really eager to have AI help them solve the problems of their lives. So I went to Sichuan province and we're looking at how can AI help do early diagnosis of crop diseases. And I mean, the farmers there or the coffee farmers in Ethiopia, they would love to have AI to tell them earlier when their crop may be getting a disease so they can be more judicious about when to apply pesticides and save money and not buy them when they're not necessary, right? So I think there's a lot of openness all around the world now to AI helping, <coughs> helping to resolve practical issues that people confront in their lives even by people who don't want to deal with like yeah. the idea of the superhuman mega god mind singularity take, 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 taking over everything. And so I think that's, that's probably what you, what you want to focus on when, when you're talking to, to ordinary people. I, I think the people I talk to also in the technology world tend not to be traditionally religious, whereas in rural Ethiopia, most people are heavily Ethiopian Orthodox, 30% Muslim, and these guys are very ready to invent, embrace AI, helping solve their practical problems. They sort of, on religious grounds, don't believe that AIs are ever going to become really as like, creative, imaginative, or general purpose intelligence as, as human beings. And I'm not really in the business of trying to unconvert people from their religion or trying to convince them an AI is going to have a soul or something, right? right. And, but I, the practical applications of AI are really a, almost a universal language now. And everyone can relate. No matter where you go, they can see AI is going to solve a lot of problems, it's going to transform the world. And they can also see it's going to, better, it's going to be better if the AI is owned and controlled in a, in a decentralized way. Like the question of who owns the future really resonates with, with, with everyone, right? Because they, they don't want like an AI colonialism, right? They, yeah. they, they, they want AI that they can participate on and they can see some of the, some of the rewards from. And so this, this fact of, this aspect of it resonates very well also. Mm -hmm.